at 16 you've never seen a review like this Weird old games you cannot tame this world that you miss Snesman is the champion, he is 16-bit Snesman is the champion, he is 16-bit Hello, my name's Snesman and welcome to Fighting February Fighting February I want to take this month to talk about arcade-style fighters on the Super Nintendo. I'm going to review three of them, but knowing my snail-paced production schedules, um, the last one will probably come out in March. We'll just call that Mosh March. Mosh March. Anyway, the first game on our list is Primal Rage. Before we dive in, I need to tell you my own history with this game and how important it was to my childhood. The story begins in 1998 with my dad looking for cheap old video games to buy his kids, who were too ignorant to know that the Super Nintendo wasn't cutting edge anymore. So he went to a used game store and stumbled across Primal Rage. Intrigued by the angry ape on the front cover, he asked the guy behind the counter if it was a good game for kids. The guy said, sure, it's got dinosaurs and stuff, you can't go wrong. And that's how, as a kindergartner, I was exposed to one of the most crude, vile, and gory games for the Super Nintendo. I loved it. It was a defining force of my childhood that shaped me into the jaded, cruel, obnoxious person that I am today. So let's get down to gaming and see how well this game has held up over the years. Here's Primal Rage, a one-on-one -on -one fighter with heavy Mortal Kombat influences. Rage. The main difference between this and other fighting games of the day is that you can play as giant dinosaurs or apes instead of people. There are people in the game, but they're your worshippers who you can toss around and even eat if you so choose. Doing so only recovers a microscopic amount of health, but the amusement factor is through the roof. The two main influences of this game were Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat. The battle system is more similar to Street Fighter since all the characters have different move lists. In other words, Little Talon with his claws and kicks is going to play differently than Blizzard who's an ape and can punch with the sophistication of a pro boxer. This is actually way different than Mortal Kombat where everyone has basically the same punches and kicks. However, Primal Rage's characters do owe a lot to Mortal Kombat. Blizzard can freeze his enemies just like Sub-Zero. Armadon has electric powers just like Raiden. Diablo can burn his enemies to the bone just like Scorpion. And Rage inherited Mortal Kombat's dark sense of humor. Just like in Mortal Kombat, the characters in Primal Rage can perform gruesome fatalities, where they incinerate, mutilate, eviscerate, or just plain humiliate their enemy. And these are just plain ridiculous. Obviously, you have some pretty generic Mortal Kombat ripoffs like Blizzard's. Freeze them and break them apart? So original! Or how about slashing them with claws until they fall apart? Genius! Sheer genius! Okay, but seriously, I do enjoy some of the more creative ones. Sauron, the T-Rex, not the Dark Lord Sauron, can jump on his enemy and crush them like a grape. It literally makes them splatter across the screen. Another character with crazy fatalities is Chaos the Gorilla. If you know this guy, then that should be no surprise. His special moves include fart clouds and acidic green vomit. Uh, anyway, his most famous fatality is called Golden Shower. He lifts up a leg and urinates on his enemy until their flesh melts cleanly away, leaving them as a steaming skeleton. This is the only fatality that got cut from the Super Nintendo version. Apparently Nintendo was afraid of parental backlash and didn't want their games to be associated with such repulsive behavior. Hmm, no, we will not include urine in our games. How abhorrent, but blood, guts, and puke are fine. Okay, sorry to interrupt, but I have another story. When I was little and first playing this game, I could barely read, and I seriously thought the character's name was Chose, not Chaos. Isn't that kind of sad? Well, I hereby declare that everyone now call him Chose, because that's how I was first acquainted with the character, and I'm the only person who matters on this earth. Let's talk about game controls. The main problem with them is that they're too complex. I've never played a 2D fighter with so hard of button combinations. Considering that I've been playing this game off and on for 13 years, you'd think that I'd be able to do all the special moves and fatalities, but no. Just a simple fireball attack, like Diablo's Fire Breath, requires you to hold down two buttons at once and then do a control pad motion. Now eating humans or performing fatalities usually requires you to hold down all four main buttons while you do a motion. That's obscene! Why don't you let me do fun things, Primal Rage? Screw you and your cryptic dino moves. I have honestly gotten blisters on my left thumb trying to pull off those damn moves. 
All the characters have upward of five special attacks, which is technically cool, but learning them all is a really daunting task. And the controls are a tad bit sluggish and slow compared to Street Fighter 2 or Mortal Kombat 2, which had a lot tighter feel. Another thing the game gets criticized for a lot is its graphics. Now this I tend to disagree. True, the sprites aren't huge, the animation is choppy, and there's a generally unfinished look to some of the backgrounds. It's easy to look back from our Microsoft and Sony thrones and mock the rough, unpolished graphics of Primal Rage, but it was actually kind of daring to release this on home consoles like the Super Nintendo and the Genesis. Why? Well, the arcade original was actually pretty cutting edge for the time. The graphic designers on Primal Rage made models of all the characters and captured their animations meticulously, frame by frame, to produce a kind of Harryhausen-like effect that no one had ever seen before. Now imagine being in charge of porting that fancy effect to the Super Nintendo, which had nowhere near the tech capabilities of an arcade cabinet. And there's your explanation for why it looks so choppy. But I give Primal Rage kudos for at least trying out an effect that was unique. You don't see a visual style like that anymore. Primal Rage is one of those games that's flawed, but it has a lot of charm. That's the recipe for a cult classic. Take something with a lot of problems and then defend it for arbitrary reasons. I'm gonna admit right now that that's what I'm doing. Rage's gameplay isn't incredibly unique, and it has awkward special moves and weird graphics, but I still love it because the characters and the style. Playing as Diablo, breathing big jets of fire and teleporting in a swath of flame is just plain cool. And there are a bunch of other great moments, hiding in your spiky shell as Armadon and watching your opponents bleed, beating your enemy as Sauron and eating their flesh, being Talon and trolling your enemy by jumping around and slashing them and making weird noises. Ratow! And the greatest feeling of ecstasy in all video game history, being puked on by a monkey. <laughs> Damn it, Cho, stop it! Stop! Things to make it better. Simpler special moves. Tighter controls so you don't have to hold down so many buttons. Remove the Mortal Kombat references like the stolen fatalities and special moves. And add some more characters, or at least some bosses to fight. The ending is really anticlimactic. Primal Rage isn't a perfect fighting game, but it's still a fun one. It scores a 6 out of 10. Well, this has been a SNES Man review, and I hope you liked it. I'm going to be back soon with my second issue of Fighting February, so stay tuned. Don't leave. I'm going to be back in like a week or two, so stay. Stay.